Congratulations, you've purchased the JBL Spinner Bluetooth Turntable. It will provide you years of musical enjoyment. Who am I kidding? No one's being congratulated here. Hi, I'm Bob, and you are in the United States of Analog, my friends. Welcome. We've got something interesting for you today, the JBL Spinner Bluetooth Turntable, just out on the market. We're going to talk about it. We're going to evaluate it. We're going to see if it's right for you, if it's right for me. Who knows? you got to stay to the end to find out. And speaking of the end, if you like unboxings, I shot an unboxing. But I'm not putting it at the beginning. I'm putting it at the end. But I shot it first, and I'm shooting this part last and putting that at the beginning. It's kind of like a Christopher Nolan movie. And if you like Christopher Nolan, and you like what we're doing here on the United States of Analog, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Oh, and I wanted to say, if you're from another country and you're a friend of the United States of Analog, please... Let me know in the comments below what city and what country you're watching from because I get, I get all warm and fuzzy inside knowing that I'm, I've gone international. <laughs> okay, enough of my silliness. Let's get to the business at hand, the JBL Spinner Bluetooth Turntable. We're going to evaluate it in a few different areas. We're going to talk about its form factor and its functionality and its features. And then we're going to talk about fit and lifestyle, if, if this is a piece of equipment that could fit in your home. I mean, not physically fit, but, you know, fit lifestyle-wise. If there's something that you want that will work within your system, it's $399 U.S. if I haven't mentioned that. Let's talk a little bit about that iconic American brand, JBL. Those three letters in that order can stir up some emotions in some of us that were brought up in the 70s and 80s, maybe even part of the 90s. So I first heard and fell in love with JBL as a brand back when I was a young man, a high school student. I was living on RAF Lake and Heath in Suffolk, England. My dad was stationed there and they had this cool place. It was called the Hobby Shop and I don't know why it was called the Hobby Shop. There was no woodworking or leather crafting going on there but on one half of the building was a slot car track and that was kind of fun but I really got interested when I walked through the doors to the other half where there was an audio store where GIs could buy tax-free low-cost components like Pioneer, Sony, Sansui, Kenwood, Bose 901 speakers. Remember those? Those things were all the rage back then. I'm not even sure you can give them away now, but back then they were super hot. And so were the L100s from JBL with that Quadrex, that orange Quadrex foam grill. Man, I really wanted those things, but I couldn't get those. I did manage to talk my dad into getting a full Sony quadraphonic system complete with a reel-to-reel. -reel. So I was pretty proud of that. And that's kind of where my hi-fi journey started and has led me to this point. <laughs> uh, JBL is a big company, all right? They, they, they're part of the Harman Group, and they have a wide range of products that, that go from, you know, the L100s that we talked about and the L line of speakers to giant monitors that, that are in radio stations and recording studios across the globe. And, and that line goes all the way through, travels through amplifiers, other speaker lines, monitors, headphones, party speakers. And then we get to the, the Bluetooth speaker hanging on a hook at a discount store. So it's a wide range of products. So I wasn't quite sure because I didn't do a lot of reading about this product beforehand. Uh, where it was going to fall in the product line, whether it was going to be audiophile or whether it was going to be a toy. Anyway, enough about JBL as a, as a company. Let's talk about JBL as a turntable manufacturer. Let's take a look at this, the form factor and the features. Uh, it is, it's a traditional turntable design, four feet. None of the feet are adjustable, by the way. It has this plastic faceplate with these uh, details in here and the large JBL logo. Man, they're proud of themselves. That's a that's the biggest turntable logo I've ever seen. Buttons on the front, plastic buttons for 33 and 45 RPM. This is plastic. I don't know what the plinth is made of. I don't know if it's some kind of composite, some kind of molded plastic. I'm not sure if it's like a wrapped MDF. I couldn't, I couldn't really tell from my investigations, but nonetheless, uh, it's got some nice lines, but it, it's got kind of a, a cheaper feel to it. We've got a felt, or is it fiber? It feels kind of, it looks like woven fiberglass or something. Uh, we also have a platter. This is a belt drive turntable. We've got this orange platter, this JBL orange platter of aluminum. It's got a little bit of pingy ringy to it. 
That's that's an official audio file term, pingy ringy. All right, let's go to uh, the business end of this thing. We've got a detachable head shell, which is metal, which has an AT3600 cartridge, which you can find on a lot of starter turntables, including the Sound Burger from AT, which I, uh, which I reviewed on my channel. Look for it. It's kind of fun. But it is detachable, and you're probably going to want to detach it, and we'll get to that a little bit later. A lot of plasticky parts. We've got a metal counterweight here. You don't always get a metal counterweight on a starter turntable. And you've got an anti-skate knob here in orange, which looks rather cheap and a very cheap, kind of non-viscous, viscousless, loosey-goosey lifting arm here. Even this little hook that holds the turntable in place when you transport it feels like it could just pop off at any minute. There are some metal parts, but mostly plastic in here and not the good kind of plastic if there is such a thing. On the back, we've got audio output, not gold-plated. Uh, we have a preamp on and off switch. We have a pairing button. We have an auto stop. So that's one of the features of this turntable when that button is depressed is that the turntable will start when the tone arm is over the platter and then at the end of your record won't lift up and return but will stop the platter from spinning and stopping the wear on your cartridge if you should forget that you were playing your turntable. 12 volt input and you've got a power on and off switch back here. So you've got switch back here, and then you've got switches here you have to activate to play. So, okay, it looks like a turntable. It's got some nice design features, but the feel of it, the look of it, is a little cheap for me. This is my least favorite part of the turntable, is the actual, some kind of frosted plastic dust cover with, with round edges, which don't match any of the kind of squared off, edges on the turntable. So I, I don't get that. I, I wish JBL had just left that off, you know, put the money into other components here uh, and made this thing a little a little nicer because I, I normally don't use the dust covers anyway because, you know, you keep them on your table. They can resonate while you're playing records and things like that. It's just, they're, they're kind of a pain. So I just uh, keep my, my dust covers off and every once in a while I get a little makeup brush like this and I just, you know, I just kind of dust the dust off of it all right little little tip from your old uncle bob there so one of my main complaints about this turntable is everything's in the back you know you've got all the connections all the buttons to turn it on the pairing the preamp on and off the auto stop on and off in the back now i don't know about you but when i play vinyl i usually approach my turntable from the front i think that's the way we all do it and so to have to reach over and turn on stuff and and turn off stuff would be kind of a pain, especially if this thing was put in some kind of uh, some kind of cabinet or rack or something like that. You would always be reaching over the turntable and guessing. I guess after a while you kind of memorize the position of the buttons, but everything's kind of scattered back here. Oh, and let's get to some of the accessories. You get this very cheap plastic uh, 45 adapter. You also get this non-plated cable, connecting cable. There is no ground cable with this turntable, and I wish this, this was a little longer. I could have used another foot in some of my applications. I think that's it. You get plastic uh, hinges for the turntable cover. That's pretty much everything that's included in the box. Now, for my listening test, we're going to get to the sonic properties of this thing now. I brought out some of the old school classics. I wasn't going to put any new vinyl or any one steps on here, or any tone poets. So I went and got some of my you know, my bargain basement finds. Alan Parsons Project, Eye in the Sky. We've got uh, Dire Straits, Steely Dan Asia, and some Fleetwood Mac. These are all used records, but in pretty good shape. And they sound pretty good on a good system because there may be a first pressing or two in there. And that's what I used for my evaluation. So initially, I ran this turntable through my shit Manny down here, the Phono preamp, into the Macintosh 50-watt amplifier here to the, to the Heresy 3s from Klipsch, which may be a little overkill for this table. In fact, as I was listening, I was thinking that this turntable would probably benefit from a system that is its equal in, in quality. In other words, maybe... Maybe just a Bluetooth speaker. Maybe that, uh, what do they call those? Those authentics. Those authentic speakers from JBL are probably a perfect match for this, for some kind of starter system. Connecting this 
to a, a good system, a decent audio file hi-fi system is going to reveal a lot of the sonic flaws of this thing. And as I got to know this this turntable over the last few days, I realized that it's not aimed at the audiophile market. I don't know if they're marketing it at the audiophile market, but it's it's really it can't be used for that purpose it it just can't the 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 cartridge they put on here is a twenty five dollar cartridge the a t thirty six hundred twenty five dollars this turntable is four hundred dollars i don't like that ratio you know turntables at the three ninety nine price point let's talk about that i mean three ninety nine three forty nine will get you an r t eighty three from fluence with the ortofon red in it there's turntables at three ninety nine from Project and Music Hall and 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 I'll tell you, the, you, you when you're dropping three ninety nine, you have all kinds of real turntable options, and I just don't consider this turntable as a real audio file product. So if that's what you're intending it for, I'm going to stop you right there and say save your money and 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 look elsewhere. And no offense to JBL if you're watching, I just I'm I'm a little confused by this because sound wise. With the system I just described, was a little muddy. The the lower mids were very boomy. Uh, the there was no sparkle in the highs, you know, whatsoever. And separation, and and center image, kind of confused. I struggled long and hard to come up with a brand new audiophile term for a you know. A fuzzy center image. I wasn't getting any of those audiophile feels from playing music with this turntable. It is just basic music, like you get off the radio, like you get off of a portable cassette players. I mean, I don't, it's just basic, basic music. I, I think that's the the operative word: confused and confusing. I got a little bit of improvement by putting this Hudson Hi-Fi acrylic mat on it. And which, by the way, I had one in orange, so if I keep this turntable, which I don't think I am, uh, I'll probably keep it on there. But that, that really deadened that platter considerably, and it made it look kind of nice. Listen, I've been hard on this turntable. The sound is muddy. There is no you know, center image, per se. So I wanted to give it a second chance, because maybe this equipment is just too revealing. So I went a more direct route. I went straight using the phono preamp in the turntable here, straight into the V3 amplifier, the Fozzy Audio V3 amplifier, which, by the way, the British audiophile named as his top amplifier for 2023 under $1,000. And look at this, I have one. And then I went uh, into some Sony SSCS5 speakers. So pretty direct route, no preamp, no anything, just to see if I could squeeze a little more sound out of this thing. And uh, not really. Marginally better. I think the super tweeters on the Sony's gave this a little more sparkle, but overall, uh, not not impressed with the sound, not impressed with the form factor, the plastic parts. I the, the cartridge, the cartridge selection again is just a mystery. I feel like a cartridge should be maybe a third of the price of the turntable. You know, the tur we should have a a VM ninety five of some kind, some kind of elliptical in there, but. You don't. You don't get that. This is for kids. It's not for me. This is going back. I'm pretty sure this is going back because I could hot rod it. You know, I could I could buy an acrylic mat for it. I could get a VM95, you know, elliptical cartridge on there or, or something else that, that might work, some other Ortofon. Um, now we're getting up into $500, $550. Then you really have turntable options. So it doesn't make sense to even upgrade this thing. So I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words of what JBL was thinking when they put this out. I'm going to guess that very soon this unit will be heavily discounted, if not discontinued. I just I don't see a place for it. I don't think JBL did their research. Uh, I, it's too expensive for a beginner, and it's too expensive for what you get if you're an audiophile. I gave it my best shot. I tried to squeeze some hi-fi properties out of it. I, I just couldn't. But that, you know, that being said, if you want to use my affiliate link below and buy one for yourself, no one's going to hit the affiliate link on this one. Uh, uh, the JBL Spinner Bluetooth turntable. The Bluetooth worked too. I had some JBL Bluetooth phones and it worked all right. It sounded okay. 
It's, it's just okay. And you know what else would be okay? If you came back and joined me on the United States of Analog. We'll see you next time, hopefully with a, with a better product. Well, little buddy, that was kind of hard on you. You deserved it, though. You deserved it at three ninety nine. I could meditate to that ringing. Um, um. All right, thanks for jumping forward or sticking around for this unboxing. I'm glad you're here. I like to do turntable unboxings. I generally don't do a lot of unboxings, but turntables are particularly fun because there's always so many levels to deal with and so much discovery and little adapters and parts and stuff like that. So it can be a lot of fun. The pressure comes though with the, with, with the fact that you've only got one shot at an unboxing. So let's get out the X-Acto knife. Let's open this up. The JBL Spinner Bluetooth Turntable, retailing for about $3.99 wherever turntables are sold. I'm gonna put the link below. And pardon me if I've already repeated myself. I haven't done the review yet. I'm doing, I'm filming the unboxing first, putting it at the end of the video, and then doing the review and putting that at the front. So, there's a lot I don't know about this turntable. I'm not sure what market this is intended for at $399, but I'm sure that's been discussed in the materials that you've already watched. So there we go, we've got that open. And as usual, there's a box within a box. I'm gonna remove that, and of course we have a dust cover, which is nice to get at this price point. And I'm not gonna take it out of the bag right now. Looks like we have a felt mat. We'll see how that goes. We'll set that aside. Looks like we have some very nice Phono Connects. Pretty heavy duty. It looks like they're gold plated. There is no ground wire here. All right, let's go. Head shell. I'm glad this has a removable head shell because I think one of the first things I do in my next video on this turntable, a second video, is to mod it a little bit and maybe upgrade the cartridge if that's possible. And it looks like it is because we've got, we've got a nice head shell there. We have uh, hinges. Hey. This is already better than some of the turntables I have that don't have hinges on the on the dust cover. So good on you, JBL. The plastic 45 adapter. Weighing in at like one half ounce. <laughs> the counterweight. I don't know you can see it has those, uh, do you call those indices? Is that what you call that? Pretty compact, but heavy. That is, that is the uh, AC adapter. Uh, maybe the belt is already attached somehow. One can only hope. Instructions, safety information, trademarks and licenses, all the important stuff. Don't forget, I always recommend you RTFM. Read the effing manual. See, they make it easy. Look at you, JBL. You're making it easy on me. This is really well packed. Hang on, I'm going to set this aside while I get the platter out. And this is, I'm kind of curious about the platter. Kind of, so we'll get the platter here. I'm kind of curious about this. This is where they're probably going to cut some corners. This in the cartridge at $3.99. Like I said in the uh, review, or I assume I'm going to say in the review, at $3.99 you do have some options. But the belt is attached to, uh, but look at that. That's that JBL orange that just gets your heart racing. Um, this is a aluminum platter. Look at that. That, that does get your heart racing though, that uh, JBL orange. And this is, you know, they have a more subdued colorway. There's two colorways in this spinner turntable. There's one that's a little more subdued with grays and beiges or whatever, but you know what? I went with the orange accents because that says JBL to me. I've always wanted some L100s with orange grills. And now I have a JBL spinner turntable, a beginner starter turntable with an orange platter. I'll tell you what, it's not too ugly. Look at that. Huh? My heart's pounding again, JBL. It's not horrible looking. Let's get the, um, let's get the platter on. You know, it's not horrible looking. 
Let's um, let's get the platter on and the belt connected. Not my preference to have a aluminum platter like that 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 rings like that, but the felt mat will help will help reduce that. So we'll put on the cartridge, and I'm assuming that it's aligned, but we'll double check that, and we'll be uh, I'll be getting out my my scale, my digital scale, to set the tracking force. Sometimes you've got to push those in. There you go. You push it in until it clicks. Now you can go back and forth the grip. So don't be afraid to push that in. So there it is. The JBL spinner, the unboxing. Um, I wish this, this anti-skating knob was a little more substantial, but that is what it is. We've got a lever here, up, down. I think this has auto stop and all that. I'm anxious to plug this in and give it a spin, but not with my good vinyl because this... This cartridge uh, is not exactly top of the line. That's the JBL Spinner Bluetooth Turntable Unboxing in Iconic JBL Orange and Black. And I hope you enjoy or enjoyed <laughs> the review that's at the beginning of this video.